What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader here from beautiful Dubai. I'm here to talk about NEO because this is one of the most requested things that I get. When are you gonna make an update to NEO? When are you gonna make an update to NEO? If you watch my last video on NEO, I was basically talking about how to trade it before earnings and there's a reason why I chose a neutral strategy on NEO because I thought that it would bounce around within this range. So far it's doing that. On Friday it dropped 10%. So I'm going to be giving you the skinny on NEO. There were some reports that it might drop by half because there was a company that put out a short report on it. So I'm going to be giving you an update. What should you do before earnings? How to trade NEO before earnings? Has my outlook changed on NEO? I'll give you guys all that in just a few. Let me go back to where my computer is up there. That's where my hotel is. So I don't have my computer out here. I was chilling on the beach all day. So let me go up there and I'll give you guys an update on Neil. Oh, one more thing. If you are new to this channel, I just wanna say welcome to the best trading channel on YouTube, hands down. We give you guys the most comprehensive content from technical analysis to fundamental analysis, how to trade options, swing trades, day trades, long-term portfolios, etc. Welcome to The Traveling Trader. Leave this video a big fat thumbs up if you get anything out of this. Also, follow me on Instagram if you want to see, and also on YouTube stories if you want to see updates from my travels like this one. And sign up in the link below if you want access to all of our trades, all of my stock and options trades, my portfolios, etc. We have a community of over a thousand vibrant traders talking about stocks, options, crypto all day. So sign up, link is in the description below, and I'll see you guys at the computer. Back in the room, back in front of my computer. So first, I'm going to update you on NEO's recent price action. What happened on Friday when it dropped about 8%. There's a very telling signal on the chart, which we will review and go over, and I'll alert you guys to it. But this is the type of price action that I was talking about forever. If you look at my last couple of NEO videos, I was saying that there will be a pre-earnings rally that you might want to take advantage of but that I don't expect NEO to explode on earnings. As a matter of fact, I expect NEO to retrace a little bit on earnings. And then part two of this video, we will discuss Citron's short report. What do I think of it? What do I make of it? How much weight does it hold? Is NEO actually going to be cut in half its price? Is it actually going to be cut in half? And how much merit is there to that report? And for part three, you'll definitely want to stick around because as always, I will give you my opinion and how I'm trading NEO, how I'm trading these stocks what option strategies I'm using, what am I expecting. So far, we've been right on the money. And then for part three, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around because I'm going to be giving you, as always, my opinion on how I'm trading NEO, what option strategies I'm using, what price action I'm looking for, how I'm looking to leverage or take advantage of the price action that I see coming. So without further ado, let's get started. Part one, let us take a look at NEO's price action and see what happened on Friday. If you take a look at NEO's chart here, you'll see that on Friday it dropped about 7 or 8%. Now this happens to coincide with that Citron short seller report that also coincidentally came out on Friday. You see here, I mean, you can, I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want, but you can actually pull up the report and see what they're saying. There's really two main points. They're saying that Tesla basically slashed the pricing of the Model Y and they slashed it by a good amount. It was, I guess it was priced at, in, in US dollar standards, it was priced around 73,000, and now it is slashed to somewhere between the 56 to 58,000 range to make it more competitive with some of these other Chinese SUV EVs. And their second reasoning is share structure. Basically, they're saying that short interest is at an all-time low, and I took a look at the short interest here on Finviz. You can see that the short float is actually 6.45%, which is rather low for a company that is experiencing a lot of volatility. And it's saying based on that, that NEO's price is inflated and traders are basically running the price up and they're not really looking at the fundamentals of NEO. The fact that you know it trades at 17 times sales. Actually, we could take a look at it here on Seeking Alpha. What is its price to sales ratio? And you can see here its price to sales ratio is actually... 44.7 so much higher than, than 17 times it's actually 44 times compared to a company like byd which byd does let's see where it's its price to sales 3.54 so a much more reasonable price to sales ratio but we'll talk about the citron report more let's go back to the the price action this is what i wanted to alert you to here this right here is called a bearish engulfing candle this red candle here and basically this is is overtaking the previous bullish price action and is really indicating that there might be some downturn here now how would you play this as a trader again we'll get to that in part three but i do want to make a important distinction between traders and investors right because traders which is mostly what i do 
Obviously, I have a long-term portfolio that I've been building for almost two decades, but hand in hand, I'm also doing a lot of trading and something like Neo, I am trading. I've been trading it since it was two or three dollars. So in this case, you actually want to be fading the market. And again, we'll talk about this in, in part three, but this right here is called a bearish engulfing candle, which leads me to believe, you know, including the fact that we are overbought on the stochastic RSI overbought have been overbought on the RSI, which, you know, doesn't have a ton of meaning when there is on its own, basically it doesn't have a ton of meaning when there is a stock that is parabolic, you know, going up thousands of percentage points within months. However, in confluence with other indicators, it can now mean something. So we are seeing bearish indicators all around in the short term, and we haven't uh, revisited the 21 EMA in a while. The, the last time we actually touched it was back in September 25th. So as I was saying in my last Neo video, there, you know, there's a reason that I opened up that range on the iron condor between $35 and $55, because I thought Neo would expire on Friday somewhere in that range. Its earnings are coming up on Tuesday. I did a whole video on, on Neo earnings. Go to that, I'll link it somewhere here. But a couple of those strategies also included bullish plays that I said you should look to get out of them a couple days before earnings because Neo's earnings, it has a track record of retracing on earnings. Traders sell the news basically, right? So Neo reports its vehicle deliveries well before earnings and on earnings day, we tend to see a drop as you could see here. If we go to the earnings reports, the last few earnings reports, you could see, I showed this in, in, in that last video, but you could see that Neo on earnings day, you know, you could see these, these three red uh, bars here. These are the, the last three times that Neo reported earnings, August, 2020, May, 2020, and March, 2020. And all three times Neo actually dropped. Most times Neo drops during earnings, only two out of the last eight times have we actually seen a rally. And that was due to Neo securing funding because it was thought that it was gonna go bankrupt. And in December, 2019, there was a major earnings and delivery surprise. But that, that's what I was saying before, that if you are playing some of the bullish plays that I outlined on Neo, you will want to look to take profits a couple of days before earnings. And you know, Friday, when we saw this bearish engulfing pattern, in my view, would have been the perfect time to exit. Again, major difference between traders and investors. Investors who bought low will likely want to hold this until retirement. But as I said, in part three, I will give you some scenarios as to how to trade this from a trader's perspective and also from a long-term investor's perspective. All right, part two, let us talk about the Citron report. I went over it a little bit in part one, but basically, as I said, there are two reasons why. It's because Tesla is slashing its Model Y pricing which is seen as a direct competitor to NEO because NEO is known largely as a, an EV luxury SUV manufacturer, not really a sedan manufacturer. So that's point number one. And point number two, the share structure, meaning that the short interest is at a two year low and it is trading at, as I said, here it says 17 times, you know, price to sales, but you know, looking that up on my own, I could see that it's much more than that. The price to sales is actually 33.4. Oh, I might have made a mistake before I said 44, but that was EV sales. If you look at just price to sales, it, it is 33 times. So still much more than, than 17 times sales. Now, how much stock should we put in this report? Well, in the short term, you should actually be paying attention to this. As I said, Neo stock price fell almost 8% on Friday. Now, as technicians or technical analysts, you know that when a stock price gets pumped into oblivion and it's trading well beyond where it should, right? Because I mean, people are, are trading it based on what they think the future of that company will do. You're not trading a stock based on what it's doing now. You're trading a stock, especially a stock like this, based on what it might do in the future. So as technicians, you know that all you need is a widely distributed piece of news, for instance, when the stock is overbought, and that can easily be the impetus to bring the price down and allow you know, those traders who bought early to sell and dump, dump their shares on buyers who are buying high, who are, who are FOMO buying at the moment. But in the long term, I actually don't put a lot of stock in this Citron report. Citron was famously the same research company that told you to short sell Tesla in February. If we look here, this is this article is from February 4th. It says even, even Elon Musk would short Tesla at this level, Citron research says, and they basically produced a report saying that it's time to short Tesla. Now, Here's what's very interesting. I took a look at Tesla's, stock, at Tesla's chart on February 4th. And on February 4th, it was actually, if we zoom in here, I'll show this to you. This is extremely interesting. On February 4th, we had this candle right here. And again, 
at this time tesla looked overextended at that time and it happened to coincide with that research report and the next day tesla actually dropped 17 percent the next day right so it's not a coincidence as i said when stocks get overextended and they're trading beyond earnings or beyond sales multiples beyond earnings or beyond sales the market starts getting panicky and those traders who bought early will say okay you know what i'm happy here this is a good time to take profits in the short term so do i think neo will actually hit that 25 dollars price target it very well could in the short term mark my words because it, it, it is not an unrealistic target we've seen that neo hasn't touched the 50-day moving average since may and if we look at 25 dollars, that is around where the 50-day moving average is now and we see stocks retrace after long rallies right i mean neo gained let's just say since the the bottom of the the march drop you know neo has gained almost two thousand percent and it hasn't touched the 50-day moving average since may it also coincides with this sideways action here this this you know price price consolidation that we had in back in october right where it spent quite a bit of time in this range now when that's going to happen i don't know i'm not a fortune teller nobody is so i can't tell you whether it's going to happen in 2020 or 2021 however let us now talk about part three trading strategies for neo as i said before unless neo reports something extremely unprecedented and unknown to the market i don't expect that it will pump on earnings i actually do think that it will fall or at least remain stagnant on earnings hence the iron condor that we created and again if you want access to all of our trades link is in the description below and i was saying that if you did buy neo before earnings expecting it to rally i would likely sell one or two days before earnings and friday in my view presented a perfect opportunity so should you buy neo at these levels in my view no i don't think you should as i always say you know wait for a retracement to a major moving average the 21 ema right now you could see here is currently at 35 dollars the 50 ma which i i just talked about is at around 25 dollars which happens to coincide with citron's citron Research's uh, price target and we could see the momentum indicators right now trending down and the rsi will likely have to cool off soon so in my view right now if if you're not in neo i would just wait until earnings wait to see if we get a drop if we drop to the 21 ema you can scale in for the long term with a first entry if we drop to the 50 ma you can put in a little bit more from a swing trading perspective if you're looking for bullish plays here i don't think there are any right i'm, I'm specifically talking about long-term holders scaling in at these major moving averages for the long term to get a better average price however as an options trader there are a few things you can do here you could sell a call credit spread right at the 50 or 55 dollar level in the next few weeks we might tend to see some resistance here and if neo does fall then you make money from selling that call spread so for instance here in thinkorswim if we went out to let's just say november 20th because our implied volatility is 207 percent remember this is the week of earnings and remember earnings weeks usually have the highest volatility and if we sold the 50 55 vertical spread here vertical call spread we can likely get over a hundred dollars per contract yeah we'll get 102 dollars per contract if we sold the 50 55 spread on expiring you know this coming friday after earnings another thing you could do is wait for the actual retracement and then sell a credit put spread which the the puts will obviously be inflated if the price drops to say something like you know 35 or 25 then you could sell a credit put spread if and when the price actually drops to one of these moving averages and you can likely get a good amount of premium for it because the price will have tanked to those moving average levels also if we do get to that 25 dollars price target there's no need to fret i mean in my view i'm still very bullish on neo in the long term in the long term all, you know all of the signs are there to be bullish on chinese evs in general the made in china 2025 initiative is going to be a huge boost to evs and as we see here china china's ev sales to account for 20 percent of new car sales by 2025 almost half of new car sales by 2035 so for the long term you know companies like byd or xpeng or neo are well positioned and they're in an infant stage of a market that is going to boom undoubtedly so you know i am very bullish on neo in the long term they're just going to suffer growing pains because they're a young company that are trying to turn a profit but right now they are focused on growth so if neo does hit that 25 dollar level well what am i going to do i talked about this before i'm simply going to buy leap calls and i might buy quite a few of them you know you can go out to the january 20 uh, 2022 or the january 2023 are now available as well and you can essentially buy leap calls 
I like to buy leave calls with at least a 0.8 delta. So you could buy, obviously, th this is going to be way cheaper if NEO does drop to the, you know, $35, $25 level and buy these leap calls and take advantage of the, the next monster rally. Because, you know, just because NEO, if it does drop to one of these major moving averages, that, that is just a reset and it gives it the chance to then complete another future rally. I mean, Tesla's path to where it is now wasn't always that that rosy if you look at tesla there's been many times you know especially between 2000 i would say 2015 and 2018 where it was a very rocky road so this is just neo's monster rally and if it does retrace it'll just be a cooling off period in my view still a great long-term investment anyway that is it for this video again follow me on instagram if you want to see stories from my travel experiences i might be starting a new travel channel because i was contemplating either putting the full travel videos on this channel but it would muddy up the the trading content so i might start up a new channel and i will i'll let you guys know if, if i do that that way you can subscribe to that new channel but for now follow me on instagram Follow me on YouTube stories. I will be posting content there. After Dubai, I will be on my way to Turkey. So that should be interesting as well. Hit that big fat thumbs up if you get anything out of this video. Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know how you're trading NEO. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Sign up if you want access to all of my trades and portfolios. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.